was most striking was not only the volume of refugees that were coming across all of the borders in the neighboring countries, but just the sheer lack of, of men. Almost um, 90% are, are women and children coming across. And every single one of those um, women have men, whether it's husbands, brothers, sons that are that are still across inside Ukraine. And I think this this sense of separation and loss and the anxiety that comes with it was just, it was palpable in every single country that I visited. One of the families that I met um, were two sisters that were traveling with their six children. And um, one of them was carrying a two-month-old, um, a two-year-old, and had an eight-year-old. And so if you can imagine, she didn't have hands to carry any other belongings. She said she came ar across with a backpack, um, no, no diapers, no baby food, no winter clothes other than essentially what they were wearing. 
And I think a lot of people are in that similar kind of situation where they they were waiting until the last minute, hoping that things would get better, hoping that they wouldn't have to flee. Some of them that I met talked about walking for five days and it was freezing. It was snowing on um, half of the days that I was there along the border. So this is not by any means an easy journey to take. And even those that came by vehicle, I mean, they, they talked about um, being so scared in the cars, not wanting to turn on the lights for fear of, of being attacked. And then once getting to the borders, some of the borders were so backed up that they were in their vehicles in a queue for up to four or five days. We don't know the conditions of those that we will be coming across. Um, we have reports even from among our own teams on the ground of so many people reporting to us that they're that they're drinking rainwater that they're down to their absolute last stores of food and so the people that may be coming across in the coming weeks may be in a much uh, more uh, frail and weakened state than the ones who've come across in the in the first three weeks There has been this tendency of refugee being such a negative connotation. It's almost seen as something um, shameful or taboo. But this crisis has shown us that absolutely anyone and in any place at any time can really become a refugee. And it's of no choice or, um, or decision that they make on their own. It also shows us that um, there is the capacity for more compassionate, organized, manageable um, asylum across Europe and across the world. I mean, we've had offers already from the US, from Canada, from Brazil, from other countries for temporary protection and humanitarian visas for Ukrainian refugees. And what we're trying to also say is this is just as feasible for refugees from Afghanistan, from Syria, from Myanmar, from Ethiopia.